Good morning, good afternoon, good night. It depends on where you are. How are you doing? I trust that you are healthy, that you are safe, and you are well. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. My name is Sophie Elizabeth Lambert. I am a published author of three books titled Hope the Third, Rise Up, Mentoring Boys to Become Men of Integrity, A Guide to Effectively Mentor Boys to Become Men of Integrity. I have been doing a series on mentoring boys to become men of integrity and today I am encouraging you to talk up, talk up. So my title for today is talk up youth as we say in Jamaica or talk up youth. My research was done, um, was gathered by, was gathered from sources using Young Men Help Seeking and Mental Health Services by NCBI. Also, Are We Facing a Mental Health Crisis of Boys by Edutopia. And finally, Bay Ridge Counseling Centers. I chose to talk about this today because there seems to be an increase of mental breakdown. The onset is as a result of concerns about the pandemic, its effects, its effects, financial difficulties, all round challenges, the threatening of a recession, and a plethora of other issues. Within a few days, I saw three young men who appeared to have just had a mental breakdown. I remember the first young man I witnessed having an, an episode of mental breakdown. My heart broke for him. I started praying for him immediately. I watched as the authorities tried to get a hold of him to help him. I remember seeing a lady standing beside me and you know I said to her had he talked about his problems with someone it would have alleviated a lot of the pressure he a lot of the pressure off his mind. Talking about what is bothering us makes a world of a difference. But men are particularly challenged in that regard because society says they have to be tough. They have to tough it out. Keeping silent about their problems is transgenerational. Young men observe older men drowning their problems into alcohol or smoking and doing drugs instead of working to resolve their problems. They are reluctant to talk about their problems, about the problems they're experiencing. They hold their troubles close to their heart and a mask on their face giving the impression that all is well. If young men perceive that their personal or public image may be compromised, or if they are considered to be weak, or will suffer reje rejection and ridicule, they will not seek help. They will engage in escapism and distraction through alcohol, drugs, computer games, the gym, and physical aggression as coping mechanisms. These methods are more acceptable within their male peer group than to find a counselor to talk about their problems or even family or friends. Those behaviours are less likely to damage in-group membership. It protects their pride, self-esteem, social identity, and positive self-image. But choices are, but those choices are self-defeating. They are young men who have trouble talking about their emotions and feelings because they have to abide by the status quo of the perceived masculinity. Men are generally fixers. And because they are unable to physically see or touch what they are experiencing, it causes confusion and fear of their problems. Research shows that young men find it difficult to understand their emotions and look externally to their social world for context and definition. To help interpret what they are experiencing, more often than not, their social world's example is to self-medicate with alcohol 
because it is an acceptable way of coping and escaping painful problems. Alcohol numbs the pain they experience mentally and physically. Being drunk helps them to relax and it gives them a boost of confidence to talk about their problems with their peers. The problem with sharing under such circumstances is that what is said comes out distorted and exaggerated and that condition fails to provide resolution to their challenges. Unresolved kept issues will cause emotional disorders, mental health challenges, as well as an increase of anxiety, stress, increased illnesses, health problems. They are at risk for strokes, for having a stroke, heart attack, high blood pressure, and heart diseases. Young men experience anxiety, panic, excessive worry, and unexpected changes in mood. Family members and friends can detect when something is wrong with their loved one and intervene before it becomes critical. Depending on how counseling is viewed within his community, he may not want to see a counselor. To help individuals relieve stress, organizations and schools can create a stress respect room with multiple things that help, would help the individuals who visit the room. The purpose of the room is to help the person relax, refresh, and encourage. That room can have low music playing. It can have words of encouragement posted all over that individuals can take if they choose. Also, individuals can change and exchange words of affirmation with each other. Organizations and schools can have a day once a month when a mental health profession, professional comes to speak with them about self-care. To help boys open up and share, a space can be created for boys to interact and relate with each other, such as a boys club. So societies can tackle stigma of mental challenges by speaking openly about mental health challenges how someone can develop mental health disorders and their effect on the person, the family, and community. As well as increased information is needed as to where help can be found. Have more men talking about men caring for their mental health, which will help to remove the stigma, stigma, beg your pardon, it will help to remove the stigma because anyone can have a mental health problem. It is said that we are only as strong as our mind. We want to change the narrative that mental health problems are secretive and shameful and that something is wrong if a person has mental health challenges. It is only another type of illness. Let us destroy the stigma so that a youth, youth can freely talk up. Now, I have um, written a list of, of places that persons can find help here in Jamaica. Those are Family Life Ministries, Choose Life International. Choose Life International also deals, well, primarily deals with people who are having suicide ideation. There's also the National Council for Drug Abuse, Eve for Life, there are the hospitals and clinics, as well as individuals can check the mental health website. And I will encourage anybody who is listening um, from anywhere around the world to check your mental health, your Ministry of Health website for 